Just off a busy street in central Moscow, there are living quarters like no other on Earth. For within the Institute of Biomedical Problems, part of the Russian Academy of Sciences, engineers and scientists are completing the construction of a mock-up spaceship which will simulate a voyage to Mars. Going to the Red Planet is no longer a far-off dream. Scenarios for such a mission in the second half of this century are already being planned taking into account the great challenge of individuals who will have to live together confined for over 16 months. Great God, a year, such a long year. Me, a doctor like so many others, I should be in a hospital or beside my expectant wife. But what am I doing here? Three men in a container for a year, constantly being filmed, the footage dates back to 1968. It was the first ever simulation of a long-duration spaceflight. A 240-day experiment also took place in 1999. But a longer experiment is now necessary. At its closest point, Mars is 56 million kilometers away. An outward journey will take 250 days. With a month-long stay on the planet and a further 240 days to return home, such an expedition will take at least 520 days. We consider that 500 days is enough for um, uh, test the facilities to estimation the conditions of the people during this chamber, during this. Uh, testing the um, countermeasures and other means and methods of uh, medical support during uh, flight to Mars. The project, called Mars 500, due to start in 2008, will recreate all the phases of such a mission. Six volunteers will remain confined in the six modules of this ground-based spaceship living quarters with individual cabins, an exercise room and storage area for food and supplies, a biomedical and laboratory area, and one creating the Martian surface. When we started to conceive and prepare this project, we did so by identifying the essential differences between a flight to Mars and today's orbital flights. And the most important thing, of course, being unable to resupply the crew with food or fuel or to replace a crew member in an emergency. Indeed, once they have left Earth, the crew members can only count on themselves. So the simulation will focus on psychological aspects of such a long-duration confinement. In some respects, the Mars 500 concept has many of the ingredients of a reality TV show, with cameras filming the interaction between people in all kinds of situations. But the comparison stops there. This is a serious scientific experiment and the only way to prepare a really long-duration mission. The study covers all aspects of a Martian mission. Scientists at the Moscow Institute are pursuing tests, for example, with a greenhouse biology lab, similar to one installed in the International Space Station. Cosmonauts confirm that they greatly value what seems like a very ordinary experiment. During training, I was not paying attention to this experiment because it was just a really easy, simple one. But in the middle of the flight, I noticed that every day I started with opening greenhouse just to feel the smell of earth that was smell of home and uh, without this tradition that I made for uh, myself my working day was not so comfortable. The European Space Agency as a strategic partner is involved at all levels of this international project. Since June this year, it has started selecting 12 volunteers. Two of them will be part of the six-strong crew. ESA is also choosing the experiments to be carried out during their 500-day confinement. In 1995, the Russian cosmonaut Valery Polyakov returned to Earth having set the current world record for the longest continuous spaceflight. On arrival, he had encouraging remarks for his colleagues. He is physician from our institute and therefore on orbital station Mir 
um, he um, flighted during 437 days. So we can compare this uh, uh, duration with the flight to Mars. And when I have uh, met him uh, after the landing in Kazakhstan, uh, his first uh, uh, words were, uh, Victor, we, uh, we can fly to Mars. <laughs> In the hallway leading to the Mars 500 modules, founding fathers of astronautics look on. Among them, Konstantin Tsilovsky, the pioneering rocket scientist and novelist, would certainly have appreciated this imaginary voyage to the Red Planet.